Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Thank you very much for downloading, tuning in, listening, uh, or stealing someone's headphones who's playing it and running off with that and listening to it on the getaway. I am Jimmy Putnam, your host, and with me, as always, are my co-host, Joshua Vassiler. Hello, everybody. And William Doherty. The brains of the operation. I need to... <laughs> I still need to come up with nicknames for you guys, I, I still like the goat for you. Will the goat Doherty. I do sometimes like to eat tin cans. That's an acronym for greatest of all time. That should feed your, <laughs> feed your ego. <laughs> and uh, I, I like nice guy Josh. Like nice guy Joshua Vossler. Oh, they always finish last, though. That's yeah, true. <laughs> so, Opening with a cum joke. Anyways, thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. I apologize for the sound of my voice. I've ha been hit with the hay fever because I'm technically Jewish and we are affected by things. Oh, <laughs> boy. Look out. Jimmy's sick again. <laughs> so uh, I, my voice is scratchy and I will be coughing a bunch and whatnot. Uh, I am loaded up on Benadryl, so I may also pass out halfway through the show. Uh, we have a great show for you today. We've got a uh, local stand-up comedian, all-around interesting dude, and my good friend Corey Brewer on the show. Hey! Hey! hey. Thanks Hi. for having me on, guys. And then we're going to talk about some stuff that I've been thinking about lately, and then maybe some topical news stories, etc. Et oh, also, uh, konnichiwa! <laughs> to our Japanese listeners. We've had 17 downloads from Japan. Ah, oh, konnichiwa. That's amazing. So uh, I'm assuming that's some kind of hacker bouncing a signal off a satellite over something <laughs> deal. Uh, what, just because they're Japanese, Jimmy? That's racist. <laughs> oh, we uh, our last episode also had five t downloads from Thailand. Oh, oh my konnichiwa. God. Konnichiwa. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably mention this real quick. Will and I had this conversation last night where I said it would be amazing if we found out that we were, you guys were really famous in another country. Like, <laughs> well, really famous, and eventually you got so famous you had to move to, like, Thailand well, to do the Jimmy Curve and become huge celebrities. That would be amazing. We also had, I think, 27 downloads from the United Kingdom, oh my God. Uh, which is exciting. I'm assuming this is some kind of crazy service where they just downloads every podcast to gather advertising data or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anyone in. Oh yeah, and and the the city in Thailand they came from is the the capital. Uh, I believe it's pronounced "fuck it." P h u k e t. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. It's right next to Bangkok. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. That's, Bangkok. that's the, one of those jokes. So P h u k e t <laughs> Thailand. The only thing I know of that is from Thailand is uh, Sagat from Street Fighter Two. <laughs> that is exactly that, what I expected you to know about Thailand. That's fantastic. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, so, yeah. So, anyways, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for supporting the show. Uh, we really appreciate it. I'm so ecstatic that everyone is tuning in and, uh, and saying... Uh, to all our listeners in the UK, konnichiwa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to all our listeners in the UK, hello. 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 <laughs> Boy, that's probably way more insulting than any of the other racist <laughs> shit we just did. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. Uh, I think the quality <laughs> of the impression was pretty it's good. Pe <laughs> no, it's cool. We also like John Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> people, people That's have great. been, uh, people that I've run into have been telling me how much they like the show and how much they've been listening to the show, which makes me wildly uncomfortable because I don't take compliments well, and my instinct is to like argue, like, nah, it's not that grip, that whatever. It'll get better. I like, do the same thing. So I just genuinely do appreciate it and everybody's been very nice and very complimentary so if you would like to support the show just all you have to do is tell a friend or give us a retweet or direct someone to like our facebook page or follow us on twitter at the jimmy curve uh you can download all of our episodes now by going to www.thejimmycurve.com uh, or you can subscribe to us on itunes uh or send us an email at uh or to the Jimmy Curve at gmail.com. Give us a show idea. Let us know if you want us to plug anything for you. Yeah, am I, I, if you I got it all, I, you, <laughs> you can also hashtag plug me Jimmy on anything. How did you just describe that before we started taping? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a complete and utter failure, but if you feel like doing it, I, I still check that. So I really want somebody to send an email that finally convinces Jimmy that pianos are furniture. <laughs> we reached a consensus on Facebook, and he wouldn't accept it. No, I There's someone out there who can make the argument. I definitively ended that discussion. <laughs> I think it's safe it's to say too much time was spent on it's that topic <laughs> yeah, last pia- time. You know, pianos are not furniture. We all agree. I'm right. Uh. Moving on. <laughs> It's a it's a consensus. It's a consensus of Jimmy. Uh, let's move on. Let's talk, let's talk to our guest, Corey. Uh, what do we need to know about you? I'm really white. <laughs> Besides, how dare you compare me to? <laughs> <laughs> he is whiter than I am. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of a bizarre human being. I guess I'm just kind of a. I've been like a drifter type person for the last couple of years. I've just become a normal member of society. So that's nice. Yeah, uh, I like I, I enjoy following uh, your exploits on Facebook. The, uh, you are one of the few. You're right. Yeah, you you have you I have a lot of friends on Facebook that have intentionally un no, unnotified you know my things on Facebook because I post so much crap. Yeah, you have that they don't want to see it, and I understand that. I understand it completely. I just have a problem. Yeah, you're just one of those people who has no type filter. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm actually nervous about doing this right now because like. Half the shit that comes out of my mouth backs me into a corner, and I just get into trouble that's, all the time. That's why I've been looking forward to having you on the show. <laughs> so. Give me some controversial <laughs> topics. Let's just see what happens. Abortion. Pro against? Uh, pro. Yeah, <laughs> me too. We're not going I, any further on this. <laughs> all right. How do you feel about fighting women? Whoa. Oh jeez! Oh, I just—you did that on purpose. I, 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 I just not, I just knocked over Corey's microphone with my show notes. I was actually on Jimmy's side with that one. <laughs> but we'll continue. Uh, Corey, you are hosting an upcoming show uh, that is at Dugan's Pub on the November the eighth. Yes, yeah. It's your plug. Plug drop. Tell us about it. It's uh, I'm trying to do a monthly comedy show at Dugan's Pub. Uh, it's on 11th and K, I believe. Is that the correct address? Yeah, that's got to be it, right? Yeah. Look, yeah. It's, it's close p- enough. If you it's don't, it's over <laughs> there. I know people can Google it. Yeah. Right. Dugan's Pub every month. Uh, this time it's a uh, Saturday at 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. and we have seven comics, including <laughs> myself. I believe it's me, Will is on the show. Uh, mm-hmm. Ryan Dowd, Annie Hildebrand, jo- uh, Grant Parsons, Joey Zimmerman. J.C. Morgan, I think that's all. Not, not me, huh? Oh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, not me either. No. Interesting. <laughs> the, well, this has to be known. I was, I asked a group uh, about a month ago. Yeah, and yeah, sure. It's like, yeah, it's yeah. It's not yeah. I mean, I thought, I thought we were friends. Yeah, you it's, know, it's cool, man. I am in your but basement. I do feel pretty shitty now. Not, though. It's not <laughs> a big. De- I mean, it's not a big deal. I'll probably just like I'm not doing anything that night. <laughs> we only plugged your show. <laughs> I'm probably just yeah. gonna like I don't know. Maybe there'll be a maybe there'll be like an NBA game on. You guys can get in for free. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's I gotta wash my hair that night. Just <laughs> sorry. Uh, I gotta wa- I gotta wash Josh's hair that night too. So I don't know. which hair? Stay in. I don't know. Maybe we'll. What are you washing it with? <laughs> Maybe we'll have a beer or something. Or I yeah. might see if might play some video games that night. We might go see some. Comedy in Omaha. That maybe, mm. maybe there will be. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're gonna go with the Max Chill Show. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Name drop. <laughs> yeah. Name drop. That's put. getting edited out, isn't it? It's not. It's staying <laughs> in. Uh, no, it's a, it'll. It's gonna be a good show. I, all of those comics are very funny. Uh, you should definitely go see the show. Is it? Is is it a free show? Is there a cover? Uh, it's five dollar cover. Five dollar cover. Dugan's Pub. Uh, it's a. It, it's a pretty cool bar. Um, it's very. Homie, <laughs> they have cheap drinks there. They so do. Five they do. bucks isn't bad. Cheap yeah. drinks, good people, good funny comedy. jokes, yeah. good comedy. Uh, go check out the show. I'm sure Corey will put me on a future show at Dugan's <laughs> Pub at some point. <laughs> so if you don't yeah. want to go to this one, just hold out for the show that Jimmy's on and go to that one. He'll be on the next one, everybody. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Listeners in the it. UK, come to Dugan's Pub. <laughs> <laughs> Konnichiwa. Corey is going to fly you in. That's going to be great. All you fans in Thailand, what we lack in eight-year-old male prostitutes, we make up for in comedy. <laughs> Konnichiwa. <laughs> Arigato gozaimashite. Now, uh, I don't know. Uh, the, the sushi chef shouts that at me sometimes when, I, when we leave uh, Sushi Japan. So, <laughs> uh, And he shouts out, Irashanse, I think, which means welcome. When we walk in, I don't know that the 
Are Sometimes we still interviewing me? What's going on with it? <laughs> <laughs> I started. No, I got. Dis- done. I got distracted and started talking <laughs> about sushi. Yeah. That is. Let me let me explain to you how the Jimmy Curve works. I mm. introduce a guest, then I talk for thirty minutes. Oh, I gotcha. While everyone else tries to get a word in, edgewise. I apologize. As uh, uh, supposedly <laughs> our number one fan, you should know that by now. Well, yeah, just sit I'm there. I'm not and always shut entirely up. coherent when I'm listening to the Jimmy Curve either. That's okay. I no one likes <laughs> hearing me talk it anyway. Just sucks. I like hearing you talk. Brad, this, is, this is what Brad Stewart thinks of me. It just sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, it's so much fun. All right. The funny, we're a huge, in, you guys are big in Thailand and huge. didn't lose the brown crowd. No. <laughs> <laughs> after no. all. No. After all. Not all of them. Uh, yeah, well, we'll incorporate that one later. I, uh, <laughs> I, don't uh, think, I don't think the people of Thailand want to be referred to as brown. <laughs> I just don't. I don't think that's an accurate. Uh, don't don't it, judge them, Josh. You don't know how they want to re- be referred to. Uh, you can email us at uh, <laughs> the Jimmy Curve uh, at gmail.com. Drop your two cents in. Yeah. Tell us where we went wrong. Translator app. That's fine. What? (laughs) I don't know how they, I mean, can they text? Can can you email somebody in like, uh, you know, tree, bush, house, (laughs) whatever? Like pictograms? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm just saying like in their language. Do do you believe that Thailand (laughs) has yet to receive the language of like written language? (laughs) I don't know. They have, <laughs> I, they have three bush house. They've got the shit out of kickboxing. Oh yeah, they do. They got a lot of kickboxing. Uh, Muay Thai. So like we <laughs> really, we really shouldn't piss off Thailand. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it was, like the wrong. In place. fact, I believe if you literally translate the name Muay Thai, it means very Thailand <laughs> <laughs> in Spanish, <laughs> tree bush which house. is what I assume they speak. <laughs> Knowing what I know about Thailand. So when you said tree bush house, that Gracias, sounds like those Thailand. sounds like those cards that coaching staffs use on the sidelines in football games to like <laughs> I actually hack that joke from Lisa Lampanelli. So. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we've made a powerful enemy this day, <laughs> the country of Thailand. Pool's also huge in Thailand. Is it? Well, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Uh, do they call it billiards? No, uh, it's not billiards. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Do, does it always break out in some martial arts? <laughs> Where oh, they yeah. snap it See, over their legs yeah. and then they, like, yes. they get two weapons. Bad voice. If you over. watch Asian players break in pool, it looks kind of like karate. <laughs> it really? It does, yeah. Huh. They put like their whole body into it, and it's very animated and fun to watch. That is exciting. That's I do want to see that sometime. <laughs> I'm going to search for it on YouTube. Corey... You yes. were over here at my house last night, and you and I drank probably too much. Yeah, uh, yeah, I felt like shit this morning. And we got to talking uh, about uh, movies, and you brought up Into the Wild. Yeah, it's and, one of my favorite movies ever. Right, and I and I I've never seen it, but that didn't stop me from <laughs> shouting at you how stupid I thought it was, uh, which is an uninformed way of arguing. But I I was thinking about what we were talking about all day. For those of you who don't know, um, Into the Wild, uh, it was originally a book by John Krakauer. It got turned into a movie starring... Uh, what the, um, oh, what's Shia LaBeouf. No, no, that's not his name. <laughs> uh, Ewan Emil, McGregor. Emil Hirsch. Emil Hirsch, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Kirsten Dunst. Sean Penn directed it. No, um, really? Oh, that makes yeah. it good. Yeah. So uh, the story is a guy, <laughs> This guy. it's about this guy, Chris McCandless, who uh, sort of... I don't know, had an early life crisis, rejected society, walked off into the wilderness, wandered around for three months, surviving, and then ate some weird berries and died. Right? Yeah, that's that's what it's believed anyway. And the idea, like the what was what I was up all night thinking about, not up all night, but today thinking about in between football plays that I was watching on TV was uh, this is Sunday night, by the way, so that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Was just this idea of of the humans need human beings need to define everything and put and ascribe meaning where it doesn't exist like i was thinking about this guy going out into the wilderness walking around for three months trying to find the meaning of life and lots of people do that lots of people undertake those kinds of spiritual journeys but rarely do they find the meaning of life usually they just find a bear (laughs) or like some weird berries that kill them and i it's and it's part of my whole ethos where I, I i never believe in the immaterial like i never accept the immaterial i don't believe in ghosts i don't 
I'm an atheist. I don't believe in psychics, and I don't believe that there's some meaning of life hidden out in the wilderness. So uh, not voting for Pete Ricketts, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about Pete Ricketts, uh, but it sounds like no. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So I. Uh, what is your response to that? Uh, I, when I hear about something like Into the Wild, I just think, what an idiot, like wandering around in the woods, and then he ate some weird berries because he didn't know what he was doing, and he died. Like, I don't feel sad for people who do things because there's a risk of death and then die. Like, I understand right. the romanticism of it, but I just, I'm, I guess I'm just too practical. So what about that appeals to you? Uh, the the interesting thing is it's not as appealing as it once was. When I first saw the movie, I thought it was so inspiring. I was like, I, I want to do that one day for no reason. And that's kind of like how my life was drifting didn't in you, that direction for a while. Didn't you like attempt to walk to California or something at one point? Uh, or you were just walk across Nebraska? My brother and I went on a hitchhiking trip <laughs> that ended in me getting hurt. And then we <laughs> scurried back to Nebraska like cowards. <laughs> and yeah, I tried to walk across Nebraska and I made it 32 miles until my backpack strap broke. <laughs> and then I had my brother come to get me. Like I said, it's not as glamorous like when you watch into the wild and it's a really good movie you won't see too many movies like it but you know my brother and i went camping for like we were out uh in colorado for like six days and i didn't right. get that's when i started to realize that we have like a lot of stimulus around us now we're not used to being out in the wilderness in the quiet and the silence right like i was out there for like three days like three days in i was like i am already losing my mind <laughs> and i'm ready to go back to society and be on facebook pretty much <laughs> but but something about that appeals to you when you're not doing it yeah exactly and it, i think it's just it's the romanticism that there could be something out there i just I think a lot of people do undertake these. We were also talking about Timothy Treadwell, who's the subject of a movie, Grizzly Man, by yeah. uh, Werner Herzog, <laughs> who, it was the same kind of thing. Like He, de he decided, <laughs> he, de <laughs> he decided that, that these are, yeah, that's my best <laughs> German. He decided that, uh, you know, he was going to go out in the wilderness and live with bears. And guess what happened? You'll never guess. You'll never guess. He was eaten by a bear. I saw that coming, and I was honestly happy. <laughs> because he was, what he was doing wasn't nearly as romantic as you might say uh, Christopher McCandless was trying to do. But like with him, I think it's more rebellion is what the movie kind of points towards. Like He had a bad relationship with his parents. Right. And that's what the movie, like, you know, reflects the whole time, and he's like doing it to get back at mom and dad. Right. I think what all of what what all of these people kind of ignore, though, is the fact that nature doesn't care, and it doesn't have any meaning for you. <laughs> You're right. It kind of just wants to kill you, and that's why we have a society. That's right. I agree. <laughs> and it's like the the search for meaning out there in the ethos just ultimately ends up in you eating some death berries, and I don't. <laughs> not e not ethos. <laughs> well, I'm an <in> ether. <laughs> Sometimes I say wrong words. I'm on lots of drugs. Anyways, <laughs> legal drugs, prescription drugs. No, not prescription drugs. Over the counter legal. Ben I'm on Benadryl. I'm t I've taken lots of Benadryl. I took Benadryl today because I had an allergic reaction, and all it did was put me to sleep. You had an allergic reaction to something that you don't know. Absolutely, it, I don't know what it was. You just touched your face and broke out. I touched my lip, and my lips became swollen. Yeah. And that's it. Uh, you did pass out drunk on my couch last night. Are you sure? I did. I felt like I lost some time. You did. Okay. Very much did. It's a, uh, I apologize. No, I'm just, I'm wondering, <laughs> like, I'm wondering if you could have, like, just stumbled into a door in, or something. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, what we're going to do now is a new segment that we're going to call oh, Lord. attacking our guests social media presence. <laughs> Catch, catchy, catchy name. Yeah, I don't, I don't have I don't have, be an acronym for that. I don't really have an appropriate drop for it. Uh so you got something? I was just going to start singing. <laughs> <laughs> By all means. Well, I, I I was hoping like you would start doing it could like make it layer it on the fly. Let's attack our guests' social, social media, media presence. <laughs> <laughs> we just lost half our viewers. Extremely well coordinated. L so, what, listeners, Jibby. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, Will and Joshua are gonna read 
some of Corey <laughs> Brewer's Facebook posts, and we're going to ask him to explain just what he was thinking at the time he posted them. Do you guys oh, have wow. anything? Do you want to? I got. <laughs> do we need to take a break while we search some more? <laughs> we're good. All right. I'm well, good. How got, old are these? I, I got one. Oh, oh my God. all right. Here we, go. here we go. You go first. I'm I'm sticking close to today because I feel like. Here's what you need to know about Corey Brewer, if you're friends with Corey Brewer. If you're friends with Corey Brewer, uh, he's going to be about 35 to 50% of your news feed. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's very true. I have a problem. <laughs> I do. No. We have a problem because of you. Okay, this is from uh, Saturday at 6.13 p.m. So that'll be Saturday, October 25th. Nothing says Husker game day like eight trillion of the exact same blonde UNL girl with tit-high acid wash shorts <laughs> and a low-cut Husker tee. Quotation marks. Giggle, giggle. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy are paying 60 k for me to be a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> All right, Corey. Four likes. Oh, my God. Four, uh, <laughs> four likes. So I just four? I, didn't, I thought I had two likes. So just what was happening? Where were you at? I was at work. I work, uh, I work at the Lead Center for the Performing Arts, which is a theater here in Lincoln. And uh, the Husker game had just got out. And people flood out of the stadium, and they all walk by the lead center, which is, at the time was closed, and people kept trying to come in the doors to use the bathroom. And I couldn't help but notice how many of the same blonde girl, the, you know, the same looking woman. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it just upset me. I don't know what to say. So I was just thinking that, and I was just like... This is just you you boring. saw three people who were about the same age and no, had about no, the same hair? Not three. Like hundreds and hundreds of blonde UNL girls all wearing like the same thing. Why does that make you angry? So who's going to notice if one goes missing? <laughs> <laughs> it's just boring. <laughs> all right. I think we've... It's like, well, I don't understand. It's just... I don't even know. Yeah, I don't let's, know. Let's move on to the next one. Next jo one. Joshua, what all do you right. got? I'm, an, I'm a bitter person. Uh, Corey Michael Brewer, October 20th, <laughs> 329 p.m. Uh, what? Uh, it's... Uh, don't bash me if you catch me looking at a high school girl. <laughs> God. My eyes don't know the difference between 17-year-old breasts and breasts my own age. <laughs> exclamation point. <laughs> one like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one more like than I expected to get once I posted that. My girlfriend saw me post that, by the way, and she was, like, totally cool with it for some reason. <laughs> so, uh, with that, uh... <laughs> It was just a thought I had, you know, if you were to show somebody a picture of breasts, and or two pictures of different breasts, and be like, which ones are Wait, 17 and which are 27? Wait, is each picture of two breasts? Each picture has one set of breasts. Okay. If you had two pictures, like, pick the breasts that are 17, pick the breasts that are 27, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference. I'm going to have to get a whole new iPod to hold all of the drops from Corey that I'm going to get from this <laughs> episode. <laughs> uh, uh, I was just saying what the, the the thought process there was. It's like it's not as creepy if you're just looking at breasts <laughs> or an ass. All right. I feel like okay. It's like like I'm oh, I'm just looking at that. Yeah. Here's what the here's the the subtext of that Facebook <laughs> post. She's 17. That doesn't make me a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm not looking at her face. That one's <laughs> that one was pretty self-explanatory. Let's think. just go to the next one. Let's go to the next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got one. Oh, August seventh, okay, five ten p.m. Uh, I have an actual cell phone number now. It's four zero two. I'm not gonna That's, read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you put that on there. Oh no! <laughs> you just posted your phone. Number. That was my girlfriend's old phone. <laughs> Old track phone, by the way. That that's not my number now. <laughs> Again, I don't have a phone number. Somewhere, but I will soon. Uh, Corey Michael Brewer, August eleventh, eight forty-seven p.m. Somewhere in comedy heaven, Carlin is already telling Robin to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just, of just got bitter. At yeah, I was just thinking of other. <laughs> uh, when Robin Williams died, I was thinking of other famous comics that had passed away that I really liked, and I was like, oh yeah. Carlin. And I was like, just thinking, I was like, I'm sure Carlin would be very annoyed with Robin uh, Williams. Josh just has a 
He's got one here. Oh, my goodness. Corey Michael Brewer, <laughs> July 31st, 11.37 a.m. What? Yeah, yeah 11.37 a.m. That's early for you. Wow. All right. Uh, <laughs> yesterday, somebody told me, how do we know Jesus wasn't black? <laughs> oh, God. Because Jesus turned water into wine. He didn't turn it into Hennessy. <laughs> No Way to lose the brown audience. <laughs> <laughs> Way to lose the brown audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there it is. There it was. I uh, said that to somebody on the fly, and they're like, that's really funny. You should put that on Facebook. And I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's all. Yeah. Well, we're burning a lot of time reading these. <laughs> We should probably continue. It's a I, long list. I feel it's our the most successful segment we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get so many more Facebook friends. Uh, follow Corey Brewer on Twitter. Uh, I don't really tweet that much. What's anymore. your handle? Uh, I think it's Corey Brewer ten. Uh, now Corey. You had a pretty good season last year with the Minnesota Timberwolves. You weren't. <laughs> they didn't put you back in the starting lineup, but. Uh, ever since your glory days, winning back-to-back -back championships <laughs> at Florida, Florida as yep. the small forward, uh, I feel like it was uh, the best you've done in the pros to date. Do you think you're going to get a starting gig this year? No. No, really? <laughs> I mean, because uh, uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves just just traded for Andrew Wiggins, who's a 19-year-old rookie who plays your position. That's got. I can't feel good. No, it doesn't. Especially because I have no idea what you're talking. The about. The Timberwolves are a basketball team, Corey. I know that part. Oh, of, okay. Like the other names. Yeah, they have a they have a small forward named Corey Brewer. I know. It's actually <laughs> that was a huge thing when I was younger, and uh, they won back to back national championships. And then someone's like, "There's a guy on their team named Corey Brewer," and it's spelled the same exact way and everything. <laughs> yeah. And then my friend's like, "Dude, you should write him a letter." <laughs> I was like, "And say what?" Like, like he's gonna be like, "Awesome, cool." <laughs> Hey, you're a, you have the same name as me, but are more successful, athletic, driven, motivated in every way, shape, and form. Hey, your existence is really going to cause mild irritation for me throughout my life when I want people to be able to Google stuff about me. <laughs> yeah, I can't Google search myself. It doesn't work. That's awesome. It's like the Michael Bolton thing from Office Space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Similar to that. All right. Let's, okay. uh, that, I think that concludes, <laughs> let's. Look at our guest. Let's look at Corey social Brewer's social media, media presence. And give him shit about it. <laughs> right. Lost the brown audience. I, I so the <laughs> Yeah. Just uh, that we'll just this part will be me stuttering and coughing here is probably gonna be edited out. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. Talking so, about it is staying in. <laughs> so we have plenty of time. So, yeah. uh, I this 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 happened to me today. Tell me where you guys are at on this. Like, I went, I had to go buy a bottle. I went and bought a bottle of ibuprofen today, and I just noticed while I was at Walgreens that you can buy, like, ibuprofen is super cheap. And by the way, generic ibuprofen and Advil are the same thing. For anyone who doesn't know that, like, it's they're identical. It's two hundred milligrams of ibuprofen in a tablet. And you can buy a jar of 200 of them for like $10. You can go to you can go to Sam's Club and get 1000 of them for like $25. Like it they cost almost nothing. Go ahead. Yes, Will. Well, I just wanted to say I think I figured something out as you're describing that. Uh generic medications and like generic foods use the same trick. And I think that's why people think that generic medications right. aren't as good. Right. Because, like, it says they, they always have the little thing on the label that says, like, compare to this brand name when really, like, it's just literally what they're saying is this is the shit that's exactly like this other thing. Right. But we're not allowed to say it's the same, but we can say compare it to this. But unlike medication, the generic cheese singles are Measurably worse. Oh yeah, they're awful. Oh, they're horrible. If you get the off-brand fruity pebbles, they taste like Fruit Loops, not fruity pebbles. It's bullshit. <laughs> right. But like, <laughs> that's why people think that like off-brand medication must not be the same because like, uh, those like multicolored fruit rocks were fucking awful. Right. I don't want to <laughs> get this Advil. Compare it to Bear. No thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, like, like, like people, and also I think the name scares people because people want to buy a leave. They don't want to buy a jar of naproxen sodium tablets. <laughs> but they're identical. It's exactly generic, the same thing. Generic brands do scare people away. Like it's, even with food, like the Triscuits. 
Yeah. Great value triscuits are called yeah. woven squares. <laughs> right. That doesn't sound like food. Well, if you look at the <laughs> if you look at the back of a bottle of Aleve, it just says naproxen sodium tablets. Like if you look at the back of a of a box of Advil, it just says ibuprofen, two hundred milligrams. Yeah, but I want to I want to buy Adidas, not Abibas. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, th- and and Was there are Justin some, Bieber. There reference? are some products where it matters, but I uh, it, some it, guys looking at the back of that bottle of Aleve and it's like I'm pretty sure my doctor told me to have less sodium. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's not even it's not even the brand name that concerns me. It's that. Right next to the jar of a thousand ibuprofens for twenty five dollars, there's a package of ten ibuprofens for like eight dollars. And I, I, I don't know who's buying that package of ten, uh, like Advils or something, but it it just struck me as the most insane ripoff ever because even at like even at whatever Walgreens you get two hundred of them for twenty five bucks, and then you can get ten of them for. 10 bucks or something like it's it's so much it's so different and i i just i wanted to know who's buying those things and it got me to thinking like what is the product in our society that is the most overpriced for how much it costs to make and like the first thought i had was coffee like it it doesn't cost anything to pour a cup of coffee it costs like a quarter of a cent but a cup of coffee costs two dollars and fifty cent. J- Josh, you're shaking your head. You had another. It, it it doesn't cost much to have it poured into your cup or brewed. It's that overhead. But it costs it costs a lot of money and resources to produce coffee beans and and have them shipped. And it's it's very determinant on the weather in that particular region that it's grown. Right. It, like it's, But at the but at the volume that Starbucks is buying coffee, it, that it that's negligible. Well, they there's there's people that are predicting that coffee there's going to be a shortage of coffee because more people are drinking it now than ever for one thing, right. and and there's regions where you know it takes time to grow, but uh, but it does not which which increases the cost which increases sure, the price of it by by a small 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 fraction it does not cost Starbucks two dollars to produce a cup of coffee. It still costs them less than a penny to produce that cup of coffee. Because mm. you used to be able to buy coffee for, a, like, a, I was talking about this earlier. You used to buy coffee for a dime, like, anywhere. The price spiked, like, so fast because companies started marketing it differently. It's just like, did you know that the guy, uh, the guy who owns Jägermeister essentially invented the concept of a high-end vodka? And he just bought, he just made generic vodka. And then sold it for a hundred dollars a bottle, and marketed it differently. But there's there was no difference in the vodka that he was selling versus ten dollar vodka. It's just what happened was I don't I don't know exactly how the story goes or what this guy's name is. Forgive me. I was listening to a different podcast where they were talking about it. But he he went he saw he saw he he was in a bar one time and he saw like four frat guys daring each other to do shots of Jägermeister. This is before anyone knew what Jägermeister was, uh, and they were doing it as like a this is the most disgusting thing we can find, so we're daring each other to take shots of it. And he thought, holy shit, that's a marketing concept. I can sell this to, Solid business. to idiot kids who want to do shots of it, and I can make it fun. And then he did the same thing with vodka, and I think that became Sky Vodka. I'm pretty sure Sky... Yeah, Sky, I think it was Sky Vodka. Uh, it was one of those high-end vodka companies. Jimmy, you haven't been paying a hundred dollars a bottle for Sky Vodka, have you? No, I drink McCormick vodka <laughs> oh, okay. because when you put it into orange juice, you can't taste the difference, or at least I can't. There yeah. are people who can. But Josh likes Bartons. I'm not one. I don't like Bartons. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, yeah, I, I don't. I'm know. Trying to plug a joke. I, yeah. I buy alcohol by volume uh, and price, not by <laughs> marketing campaigns. But I, it just struck me that like. There are a lot of things in our society that are so overpriced just based on marketing. Uh, another one of them was, <coughs> oh, excuse me, uh, I used to work at a bookstore in a mall, at the Walden Books in a mall, and every year during the Christmas season, we would run the calendar stands, and we would sell those calendars. I I don't know how many trades, I don't think I signed any non-disclosure agreements or anything like that, but like... Those calendars cost fifteen ninety nine. Like that's how much they sell a lot of those calendars for, and they sell the shit out of them. But like you don't sell all of them. And on January first, they put stickers on all those calendars that say 
four ninety nine. And then on January seventh, they put stickers on those calendars that say one dollar. And then a week after that, they throw them away. So uh, it's just one of those things where I thought, how much does it cost to produce? It, it probably costs, a, you know, a penny per calendar once you do it in a certain volume. But we're all ultimately to blame for coffees or calendars or whatever because that's what people are willing to pay right. for the coffee. Sure. If people were like, hey, you know what? This is ridiculous to pay $4 for a coffee instead of just saying that and then buying the coffee. I don't know. Maybe not buying the coffee. Right. It would lower the price. They'd have to in order to sell. But I think that's my point is that people are susceptible to these marketing campaigns. when they Like anybody should be see – Four dollar cup of coffee, and just think that is insane. That's re- that makes no sense. I'm not going to pay that. With the example of Starbucks specifically, Starbucks is literally a an addictive drug. Yes, it is. It it has more caffeine than uh, a regular cup of coffee, right? By intention, and then the addition of like all the sugar, basically, like with the incredibly sweet coffees, like the Frappuccinos that they sell, you're giving people a bigger dose of caffeine and a bigger dose of sugar than they would get from a cup of coffee. But unlike an addictive drug, the first dose isn't free. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Like you, is, have to, you, have to dec- you have to choose to pay for the first one. He's saying that people will pay $7 for a cup of coffee because they're addicted and they don't want to go through withdrawals at work. Because that's awkward. Right, but people will pay $2.80 for a cup of coffee, not for just for no reason. Yeah. Like, that's that's what's insane to me. People, yeah, I don't know. I People will pay anything to satisfy their appetite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That oh, should yeah. be a... Yeah, that... Hey, Taco mm. Bell's new dollar menu, our sponsor, could use that... <laughs> could use uh, that... Uh, that. Anyway, I was I don't know. No no one's jumping in here, so we're gonna move on. Uh, <laughs> this is all business stuff that is beyond well, my I think, speaking speaking of coffee, my wife came back from Costa Rica and she went to a coffee farm and she learned that dark roasted coffee, people think it has more caffeine less in it. Less caffeine. It has less caffeine Correct. than regularly brewed coffee. And so now I drink regular coffee. Yeah. Although I do prefer the taste of dark roast. As do I. That's what I, I drink dark roast coffee. Which is basically like burnt, it's like burnt coffee beans. So if you prefer the taste of dark roast, but it doesn't have enough caffeine, here's what you want to do. You want to take a dark roast coffee, pour in a five hour energy, <laughs> and then you're good to go. <laughs> it's, Zing. it's the perfect crime. <laughs> That's got to taste awful. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've but I've seen what Will puts into his body, and that's not an outlier. That's a, a right in line with the guy saying that Starbucks is unhealthy. <laughs> I'm saying it's addictive, but I could also make the same argument about most of the fast food I eat. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break here, and we'll come back with uh, the news with Joshua Vossler. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some current events. Joshua. 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 Vossler. News. Hello, everybody. Chinese critics are saying, take a walk (laughs) (laughs) instead of seeing (laughs) Guardians of the Galaxy. It has only made $30 million during its release in China. Do you know how much it made uh, stateside? A lot. Yeah, yeah. it set the record for opening weekend. Right. They've been showing it at the Marcus for, I swear to God, half a year. Yeah, Yeah, well, it was, you know, there's a lot of people in China that thought it would be a hit. Uh, What's wrong with the movie, you might ask? (laughs) Because you're a racist. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. (laughs) The disappointing rollout of the movie is blamed on more than 80 poor translations of many jokes and puns in the movie. (laughs) Even the title of the movie was translated to Interplanetary Unusual Attacking Team. (laughs) (laughs) That's a a joke (laughs) that somebody came up with. That is real. (laughs) Interplanetary Unusual Attacking Team. This is news, quote unquote. I was reading about, speaking of like (laughs) Americans misinterpreting things they see from foreign countries, like... (laughs) I was reading I was reading this article about how there's this theory that there are all these kinds of crazy Japanese game shows that you see on YouTube and stuff that where people just get shit poured on their heads and there's tentacles that they have to avoid and, and like or they do these crazy things but like those are like sketch comedy troops like those aren't real game shows you know but we just see the video of them and we're like 
Japan's insane. Do you guys remember a show on, I think, Spike TV called Most Extreme Elimination Challenge? Absolutely. Yes. It was it's awesome. One of my favorite shows right. ever. And, and like, that's not, you know, that, that was a sketch comedy troupe. Like, that's yeah. the thing. That's not a real Japanese game no, show. But, but it was unbelievably funny. And it's like you always see these, these things, too, where, like, you know, N- North Korea takes a story from The Onion or something comedic and says, look what Americans think about us. Like, they think it's real. <laughs> like, they don't know that that's a joke. I always think that's funny. Sure. But I didn't North know that was North Koreans fake. do that. And also, everyone's in-laws on Facebook. <laughs> those two groups of people. Right. So, so, but like, Gar- yeah, it, Guardians of the Galaxy, it, that surprises me. Like, they didn't, they couldn't accurately translate this is a talking raccoon. No, it's like uh, <laughs> like in the movie, um, they they refer to the raccoon as a, a rodent or whatever. Right, right. And it, they didn't. I did just. I guess rodent didn't translate, or whoever translated <laughs> the movie didn't understand. So it was like um, it it was like translated into like we're weird weird squirrel or something. Like it, was, <laughs> it was just like totally. It just nothing meshed in the movie. Right. So. That's funny. It's confusing. I mean, like, that movie, it, I mean, for as, as absurd, like, far-out sci-fi fantasy it, as it is, that movie, in a weirdly specific way, is, like, dripping with American iconography. Yeah? I just e- wanted to... Explain s- yourself. <laughs> that you was s- as smart as I was capable of sounding. <laughs> well, no, was- like, like, everything, like, the movie is visually styled as, like... A uh, like '60s kind of like B movie, like right. trashy B movie. The soundtrack is all about like the you know, and and the soundtrack is part of the plot of the movie itself too. Right, um, and that's all about like you know, no having a certain knowledge of like pop music from the '60s and '70s. Yeah. So like, I I can see how that wouldn't translate, but that's different than. Wacky raccoon, <laughs> right? Well, crazy squirrel. The uh, what? Uh, what always surprises me is the opposite phenomena, which is you see these movies and you go, "How did that? Like this movie was terrible. How did this director get to make another one?" And you go, "Oh, well, it made two hundred million dollars in India or something, and, it, and it'll be like." I don't. I can't even think of an example of it, like the Dukes of Hazard movie Any or M. something. Any M Night movie, M Night Shyamalan. Right, like okay. certain movies just do crazy in the foreign gross, and, and they're they're awful movies. The, confi- trans- the Transformers movies largely sustain based on their overseas gross. Like they right. don't do poorly in America, but they're so expensive that if they were only doing like American money, they would be too risky to make. Right, and it's it, you don't need to translate too much in the Transformers. No one watches, no one right. misses the dialogue anyway. Or like the Fast and Mark Furious Mark Wahlberg's movies. abs uh, <laughs> are immediately viable in any language. <laughs> he was in The Happening. <laughs> the Happening. I have to mention something about M. Night Shyamalan. because us do it. It confuses me because he's had a handful of movies that were, we did The Sixth Sense. Yeah. Which was a really good movie, in my opinion. I'm I like the only good. person who likes Signs. <laughs> I l- Whoa, I love Signs. <laughs> signs was I'm a serious. pile of hot garbage. No, that's You're the wrong. <laughs> well done. You're wrong. We're high-fiving I right now. I saw that movie <laughs> Jimmy and I just in school <laughs> when I was in sixth grade, and I was already too smart for that I movie. I like it for some reason. I It involves I'm baseball. <laughs> <laughs> which I was you watch into. an M Night movie like The Sixth Sense, which is really good, and like, there's another movie. That's Unbreakable really is good. fantastic. I love hey, that movie. Yeah. yeah, maybe if that little girl like rocked ass with a super soaker, it would make sense. <laughs> but she didn't. She just left little glasses of water. That's the That's least cute. efficient possible <laughs> water delivery method. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> it's true. You know what? God doesn't make things easy. All right, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to work a little bit. I was just saying, like, and also aliens visited, is, uh, what, visited a planet that's 70% the, the thing, thing that, that kills yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. Smooth move. I mean, it, it was, uh, you have to admit, even if you thought signs sucked, it was still a precipitous drop from there. Right. That's what, <laughs> no, that's what confuses me about M. Night Shyamalan, because you have, like, the sixth sense, but then you have, like, The Happening, which is one so of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. If we're looking right. at the career of M. Night Shyamalan, like... It as, starts as good the Empire, and just gets As worse. the Empire State Building, he started off at the top floor 
with yeah. the sixth sense. Now, when he dropped off with signs, it <laughs> no. was just like him falling off the balcony one floor down, <laughs> before, like hitting the balcony and then dropping the rest. Right, yeah. right. Or yeah. Lady in the Water. <sighs> the best the best thing I've ever seen M. Night Shyamalan do is uh, that uh, American Express commercial he did <laughs> when he was still famous. <laughs> I the, here, Here's my favorite thing about M. Night Shyamalan. Apparently, he's just... Uh, an uh, he's been, he was really awful to critics at a certain point. Like he he really rubbed a bunch yeah, of media the wrong way. They had way. to watch those movies. <laughs> well, it's funny. Go on, if you go on like Rotten Tomatoes and look up M Night Shyamalan's movies. He has the lowest scores of any director ever. And like a lot of his movies, like Lady in the Water, will has like a one percent. Some Giamatti of them had zero, was wasn't he? Yeah. That's well, depressing. Well, like, some of those movies are bad movies, but there are worse movies. Like, the Signs, if you go on IMDb, it has, like, it, it's, like, less than 5%, which is nothing has less than 5%. Right. But it's because he rubbed critics the wrong way, and they all were just, like, fucking zero, like, on all of his <laughs> movies. And so it, it, it's really funny if you look at Show up. business isn't fair. You're, like, for, you're forgetting uh, evil when they're stuck on the elevator? Oh, Devil. I remember, no, Devil. Oh, oh Devil. Actually, yeah. not, I didn't find that movie to be totally horrible. Yes, it's it like was. Half horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> no, Lady in the Water is depressing because like, any time I see like a really good actor in a really bad movie, that gets me angry. Paul Giamatti's in there. He's one of the best actors. I did love it, that guy. Did it also have John Leguizamo? I think so. He was in one of his movies. I love Paul Giamatti. He's like, what are, yeah. you, doing? What are you doing in this, He's sir? He's the best. You could do better. I right. like in that movie, like uh, M. Night Shyamalan, in that movie that he wrote and directed, he right. is the sole uh, thing that saves the world. Oh, yeah, right. I know, right. <laughs> that was kind of big headed. Like, oh, in really? Signs, M. And Night Shyamalan killed Mel Gibson's wife. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Which, I, yeah, I don't know. Let's just put that in there. It'll take us a long time to unpack that suitcase. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do, let's do one more story. What do you got? Sold to the highest bidder, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ebola.com just sold yeah. to a company called Weed Growth Fund. <laughs> a company uh, that bought the site in 2008, uh, they paid $13,500, is now getting $50,000 in cash and $164,000 worth of stock in a Cannabis Sativa Incorporated. Wait for for the for the URL for Ebola dot com. Why? Why did they yeah, want to um, buy Ebola dot com? Because the only treatment for Ebola in America is some fucking weed, so you can just calm the fuck down. <laughs> that, that's the, you mean that's the only treatment that's for a, hearing about yeah. Ebola yeah. all the time. <laughs> this <laughs> is yeah. America. We need weed. That's the treatment for paranoia. Weed yeah. growth fund and then CEO. Also uh, Eric Miller said uh, when the new Ebola dot com website debuts in a few weeks. It will be the go-to resource, uh, all Ebola. Oh, better well. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in addition, though, you can get all your resource. Ebola in one spot. <laughs> <laughs> in addition, his company will finance research on cannabis that he says may or may not prove a connection between cannabis and Ebola prevention. Are you tired of dragging your ass out of bed at 6 a.m. on a Sunday to go to the farmer's market to get your Ebola? Well, now it's... <laughs> Now it's all available in one spot on Ebola.com. <laughs> all your Ebola needs. We got Ebola placemats, Ebola mouse pads, Ebola coffee mug. I don't even know. Ebola oh, wait. The, Ebola the flamethrower. Oh, wait. Is it? Is he using it as a pun like Ebola weed? Like, I'm going to smoke Ebola oh. weed. Ah, uh, no. Nope. That's not what he's doing. <laughs> he, that'd be clever. Yeah. That, I think that's a better idea than what they're actually doing. That's what he to should. Do. Like, as I was just as I was just running my fat yap like that, I was like, oh, Ebola weed. E Ebola. Okay. That, that could work. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. <laughs> it's not bad at all. He's just gonna post a bunch of Ebola <laughs> news, like news links. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't Ebola know. Ebola shit. They, uh, there's actually a company that makes stuffed uh, toys that is, uh, uh, and they make like they specialize in like germs and organism stuff for teaching purposes. Like, and they com they're completely sold out of Ebola stuffed animals. I find kind of weird. Oh, there's like a stuffed animal of the Ebola germ. Yeah, I was gonna like say a, it looks like a worm. Are you right. it, or it's just a bear, it's but it's true. infected with Ebola. <laughs> it's true. They're yeah. making stuffed animals of the Ebola virus. I, yeah, I, I like that. It's they're just incredibly small. They're so. 
<laughs> I like I like that it's, it's just in there. Trust me. I like just that it's like a teddy bear, only it's like di- dying of Ebola. Like it's, <laughs> it's vomiting and stuff. Like this when you squeeze it, when you squeeze blood, it, blood, blood just comes, comes out. out of the eyes. <laughs> squeeze it, and blood comes out the rectum. They say you have a picture of it. It's got a smiley face and everything. It's kind of weird. <laughs> oh, that's right. I do remember that. That's funny. Kids will so, love their Ebola dolls. Visit the Jimmy Kerr Facebook page if you want to know what a stuffed Ebola virus looks like. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, oh, and oh, we got to talk about that other thing. Uh, yeah, was that? it's not so much. It's just something that's happening um, for months. Uh, Say it in your news voice, anyway. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we demand news voice. Oh shit! You put me on the spot. I don't have anything prepared. Um, separation of church and state. <laughs> what do you worship the devil? <laughs> um. Actually, for a while now, uh, there was a... Okay, I'll just explain it. At the Oklahoma State Capitol, they have the Ten Commandments. Well, some Satanists got together and they said, well, that's, we want our religious monument. It's like a big... It's like a statue of the tablet or something? Yeah, it's, okay. it's a monument. Uh, yes. It's like a... Yes, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Correct. <laughs> So no, it's a monolith. Get it right. So now these these Satanists got together and they hired this guy to create this monument to their whatever god. I don't know what it is. <laughs> what was it? Uh, Both of but Baffafet. Baffafet. Oh yeah, that guy. Oh, he was my favorite character in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> no, Baphomet. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, yep. he was bad. Both. He was like a bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah. He got eaten by the Sarlacc. Mm. Will it, Will is shaking. <laughs> he knows I'm say. joking, but he he wants to correct me so bad. He was like, "That's Boba Fett, you fucking asshole!" Like I have to say, it was like a really non dramatic way for him to die in that movie. It just <laughs> because he's such a big character and everyone loves him, and he just like falls off. He's like, "Boom, dead!" Like, and there was like nothing building up to. It. It's like Boba Fett's dead. The end. Well, no one no one loved him at the time that movie was made. He wasn't an important character. It's just right. fa- fans got fans like just created this mythos that right. did not exist in George Lucas's mind about Boba Fett. But anyways, Baphomet. Guys, we were talking Baphomet. about the devil. All yeah. right, this was getting to important things. Okay. Boba Fett is a god. The, the, Continue. The thing is is like it's not a matter of if this is going up, it's just a matter of when. Like they've been trying to stall it for, you know, for so long, but it's going to go up. And and right. and it, it just brings up a broader topic of like is that okay? It should none of it be up there. Is there, you know, freedom of religion and you know separation of church and state? I'm bothered that re- that religious organizations don't have to pay taxes. Like churches don't have to pay taxes. That bothers I, me. That I think bothers it's me dumb. Too. It is. I think. It, I mean, what what are the guy? Who are the guy? Like all the famous people, and it's based on a science fiction book. What is that religion that I'm? Scientology? Yeah, Scientology. Yeah. yeah like Let's that... get them on our bad side. <laughs> oh, what are they going to do? <laughs> Fuck those guys. Those they guys don't. The, those guys are the dumbest. Jimmy, they... you forget. You're a crazy rich guy. You're like their number one target. <laughs> right. And that's what, that's all Scientology is, is a tax dodge. It's just a tax scam. Like, that's mm. all it ever was. It's, it, we know it's... the guy who wrote the book. It's a science fiction author who made a bet with other famous authors that he could get richer running a religion than being a famous author and he yeah. won. Yeah. 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 And 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 it's amazing. And like I I don't know. The I, question it, is if you guys can turn Jim the Jimmy Curve into a religion <laughs> that's popular enough, can you complain that you don't have a statue of you guys and that will happen? I like it. That would be awesome. Yeah, I I definitely complain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you get enough people behind you. All right, listeners, let's get on Wikipedia. Get on Urban Dictionary. Okay, let's. So I don't know how this. Starts. I will be posting this this picture of this monument that they are going to be putting up at the Jimmy Curve. It's amazing. So you can see what we're talking about. Uh, on it's Facebook, quite a site. I'll put it. I'll put it on Facebook as well. Uh, awesome. Here's here's what I don't understand about Christians who get mad about like Satanism and stuff, mm-hmm. like. Chris, they're they're always like they're always freaking out about people who work like, worship the devil. Like that's the scariest thing they could do. Like Christians and people the, who worship the devil are the two groups of people who believe in closest to the same thing. <laughs> yes, yeah. Like right. that should be totally understandable to you. You're like yeah, no, we both believe in God and the devil. Like we we fundamentally believe the same thing. You're just on the wrong team. <laughs> right. Like. 
Well, yeah, it's, a, it's like it's like it's like Giants and Dodgers fans hating each other instead of understanding that they're the they still watch right. baseball. <laughs> like I, I just think like the founding fathers may have not been so clear. Uh, on just and just to be clear, the Giants are the devil worshippers in this analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, but the the founding fathers they may have not been clear on everything, but the separation of church and state and the freedom of religion, I think would put, you know if people actually like believe that. Then this would never happen. The, the the Ten Commandments wouldn't be in there. You, you're gonna need a you're gonna need a monument for every freaking religion that's out there. Mm-hmm. You know, to satisfy everybody all the time. Opposed to saying, well, govern. You know, religion has no place in government. And I'd like to know why I can't buy alcohol on Sunday mornings. <laughs> like that's yeah. that's still a thing around here. Yes, I it know. is. Absolutely. You can't buy alcohol. I, I don't know if this is still in effect, but when I lived in Kansas. You know, 15 years ago, you couldn't buy alcohol on Sunday at all. Yeah, no. yeah, I you can't buy alcohol Kansas after is, 2 a.m. Right? Kansas is still living in the 1800s. Yeah, that's that's that's, he, that's everywhere. That's here, everywhere, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, like, yeah, Kansas. There are people in Kansas who still believe that the Earth is flat. Like, no, Kansas, Kansas is way behind the curve. Like, it's well, there's just cults all over that state. It's bizarre. Like, yeah. it, it, it's <laughs> prohibition started in Kansas, th- and this is all. This all is Screw like it. one of the reasons why it always gets annoyed. I always get bothered when people talk about, like, well, you have to respect everyone's opinion. You have to respect everyone's beliefs. No, I don't. Mm. Some people's beliefs are stupid. Like, if you if you believe that the earth is flat, I don't have to respect that. Mm. Like, if you believe that you can go see a psychic and she'll tell you your future, that's dumb. And I don't need to respect your ideas there. That's just, you're just wrong and I don't care. I Sorry. There's, I, a, psych- it, there's a psychic place here in town. I think it's on... Tu- Tuzlin? Is that how you say it? Yeah. I, w- I just want it's just ten dollar readings. I just want to go in just to say I did it, even though <laughs> I want to hear what she has to say. I'm a s I am I do not know. I just want to see what happens. The thing is if you're if if a religion <laughs> if religions are tax exempt, then and and a lot of them wouldn't exist otherwise, then wouldn't indirectly the government be promoting the religion? Hmm. And with that, thank you for listening to the Jimmy Curve. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the answer to your question. I don't know that I understood what you asked. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Send <laughs> your <laughs> answers to <laughs> the Jimmy Curve it. at gmail dot com. You beat me to it. Oh, uh, that's a good place. Jimmy to wrap will it read up. any religious literature. He's com- he's open minded to any. <laughs> before we before we get out of here, I just want to say one thing uh, because I was yeah. thinking about it early on the previous episode of the Jimmy Curve when Brad Stewart was on here. I was mentioned briefly, and I feel like I want to give like a better visual picture of myself because all they know about me, the listeners, is that I'm a janitor who farts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they heard. It's, it's like true. I'm not a middle aged man who lives in a mobile home. No, you know, no, no. Well, they can I'm follow younger. you on Twitter and yeah, they could. friend you on Facebook and find out who you know. really are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't feel like they got a good visual representation from that. So right. Just wanted to... No, I'm pretty gross. And No, I'm pretty sure if I'm you're going, going for janitor that farts a lot, that's pretty much <laughs> spot on. Yeah. <laughs> so. Don't worry. I'll take a picture and I'll put that on. Don't I got, a, I got a lot to do. I got oh, a lot to do. I got a lot to do. I got to put you up. I got to put the, <laughs> the Satan picture up and oh yeah, goodness. I'm putting it up. And go see uh, go see Corey's stand-up show at Dugan's. What's it called? It has a long name. It is called the Sensational Comedy Cavalcade of Spine-Tingling Astonishment. And that's at 8 p.m. on November 8th? Uh, 7 p.m. on November 8th. Se- you're right. 7 p.m. November 8th. <laughs> And Josh is taking a picture. Dugan's Pub. It's your blood. Thank you. All right. Absolutely happy to do it. So let's all give a big hand to Corey Brewer. Thank you for sitting in with us. Thank Yay. you, guys. Thank you for having me. Jimmy and Joshua Vasa will be on the next uh, comedy show at Dugan's. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I don't know. If I can we'll make it. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty busy. Mm. I probably have to edit a podcast. Yeah. This thing is taking off, and Dugan's uh, pub comedy isn't. So I mean, I'll just—I'm not promising anything. I just can't <laughs> fully commit to. Uh, sounds a lot like Ryan. Big I'm idea. not gonna do the lie. drop. I do just, the drop uh, one more time for me. The Ryan drop. I'm really white. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right, go see Corey Stand Up Show, 7 p.m. November 8th, uh, for Joshua Vossler. 
Hello. Do I? I, I feel like I'm always mispronouncing your last name. Your last name is Vossler, and but I always say Vossler. But yeah, that's well, Vossler. That, that just sounds cool. Okay, Joshua Vossler. Thank you. And Will Dora Tehe. Hail Baphomet. <laughs> <laughs> I am Jimmy Putnam. Thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.